what is it? I kind of talked about that already, but does anybody have anything that you marked on there that you want to kind of address? No? I, I just want to focus on the last one where it says success equals accurate data on current levels of performance. So this is a great way for you to get that accurate data of what each student knows and does not know when they're doing that independent work. What about why no-nonsense nurturers use this strategy? Anybody mark anything in that section? I had a question um, about the five dollars and all four FX and the process for a master time. Mm -hmm. What exactly does that look like? Especially if they're working mm -hmm. like, uh, I do a lot of private day models. We're doing college inquiries right now, looking at the colleges. So my multiple at that may not be someone else, someone else. How much time do I utilize? So, so that's a good question. It's basically on what those scholars need. So an at math for math may be different than an at bat for science, right? Because if I'm giving you a math skill, let's say we're working on multiplication, an at bat may be different problems and different days that you're working on multiplication. For science, if it's an at bat, it might be a concept that they're learning. And so maybe she didn't get it today. So the next time I'm gonna come back, so she's struggling with force of motion. I know she's struggling on force of motion. The next time I give her an independent practice, it's gonna be on force of motion so that she can be successful. So those at bats are the ways to build those skills before an assessment or before that end of that period where you're like, now I know they know it. Okay. okay. So say for instance, I give like a head modal quiz mm -hmm. and I see that that person got the specific thing. I reassign that. Yeah, so you could reassign it, you could look at it and say, well, it maybe it was a vocabulary, maybe I'll reteach vocabulary, see how they do if I rephrase it a different way. Mr. Max's um, skills, his social studies are more like spiral. So his, he might hit religion here this week, and then says, okay, they didn't really understand it this time, so this time when I hit religion for my next topic, I'm gonna change it up a little bit, or I may ask it a little differently to see how it changes and how students become more successful or less successful. So your app badge is basically how many times does it take them to get it before they need to be. Alright, how about the when to use the strategy? Um, Bachelor, you already had one question about that. Um, Did you mean about like, is that the, I thought that was the order, but I see now it's not the order. Yeah. Can you think of another time that you might use the independent learning that may not be on here? Um, lunch. What'd you, what'd you say? Lunch. At lunch? Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking like when you do your test corrections, that's an independent activity that they may be working on. Boy. So she's, she's working on lunch. <laughs> She's well, I mean, back here. <laughs> no, would they not use it in lunch? Because you kind of, especially in the lower grades, you got to tell them what to do until they can go independently eat by themselves. And you monitor them. Oh, and you monitor. I was not thinking about that. I know you wasn't. I wasn't either. Get on my level. Yeah. She's way up the public today. <laughs> All the way up. All right. How about our keys to success? We saw those on the PowerPoint as well. What's something that may have stood out to you for that one? Um, for me, it was the identifying the follow-up tasks. I've been finding myself being very intentional about identifying those tasks to meet the needs of those higher students. Because a lot of times, um, we get caught up with the ones who are in the middle and who are at the bottom, that the high students are kind of hanging out on the side, not having anything. So being intentional about having those follow-up tasks has really been instrumental for me. Yeah, and you want it to be meaningful where it's not that they rush to get through their work. Mm -hmm but you want it to be something that they're gonna to want to um, do and enjoy. So it is very difficult to find the medium between those two. All right, management tips. We talked about those as well with giving precise directions. We did hear those from Dr. Brown. Um, immediately beginning monitoring, you saw her do that as well. And um, we did not see her helping the monitor. I think I actually stopped her um, before that because she did stop to help somebody and then um, came back up. And then minimize your movement of your scholars. So on the back of the paper, we yeah. have the same thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is not side two of your paper. So look, the first time I did it, I copied uh, the think pair share, and this time I copied side one of both pages. So mm -hmm. I will get you side two for tomorrow. And yes. You, you know, these things look different for each class yeah. because, you know, depending on how you operate as, a, as an adult. Yeah. I know in my last block, by that time they are done with lunch and everything, mm -hmm. my whole direction is totally different. It's like, okay, get this done, get the other classes to start, you have your morning work to start. So these, um, how you structure it, it changes for, depending on your class and how you feel. 
Yeah, and so you may have different directions for each group too, depending on that. Some of them you may need to say, we're gonna start with the book and then go into the PowerPoints once they get started so that you can kind of keep them in. So that's a very good point. Uh, so we're gonna now take a look at another video. Oh, wait, I forgot. Okay, so before I do that, we had three sets of directions. Dr. Brown gave all three of them. The first ones were for the actual activity, what they were to do that with the activity, what to do when they finish, which Mr. Max said that's sometimes something that he kind of has to work with, and then what to do if they have questions. So what did Dr. Brown use for her if they had questions? Ask three before me. Ask three before me. So she has them going to other people before they come right to her. Alright, so now I have our big idea. So somebody want to stamp this in place for us, keep it going. Bachelor? When well planned, executed at a high level, independent practice is intentional planning for independent learning using or uses the gradual release framework and communicates a purpose for learning in a culturally relevant and meaningful way. So our big thing is using our independent learning to help build our scholars, to help them feel more successful and to make it more meaningful, and using it with no nonsense or anything. All right, so we're gonna see it in action again. This is gonna be a little bit different. We are gonna go from a whole middle school all the way down to a second grade classroom. So you'll kind of get to see some of the frustrations and concerns of a second grade teacher as well. This is Ms. Kaufman. I am not gonna show you her whole video. Her video is about 12, 14 minutes long. What I am going to talk is when she starts, she has them listening and looking at two words to say if they have the similar vowel sounds or not. When they have the same sound, they write yes, and when they have the different sound, they write no. So she's currently modeling what they're going to do when they get to their independent practice. So I'm going to. And you are. So, Ms. Ellis, do you think those are going to have the same or different sounds? Different. different. So when I say go, you are going to stand. I have a lot of friends who are not listening and following directions right now. And you're not going to know what to do when you go back to your seat. Preston at the voice level zero. Hunter's in the ready position. Christopher's eyes are tracking his coffin. When I say go, you are going to stand up, voice level zero, go back to your seat and take out 2.1. When you are finished, you are going to just keep it out on your desk so we can go over it and take out a book and read. If you have a question, what do you think you should do? Raise your hand. Do you think you should follow me around the room? No. So Chloe, what are you going to do when you're finished? Good, so now what are you going to do when you're finished? Thank you. Preston, what are you going to do when you're finished? <laughs> Is that what you're No, that wasn't funny. You can feel the No, that was not good. <laughs> So when I say go, 
did you see Ms. Kaufman do in her classroom that goes along with what we were talking about for independent practice? Narrated. She narrated. She checked for understanding for several students. She well. did. She made sure that they knew exactly what to do when they got um, when they finished earlier and had a question. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So I do want to address one thing that I see and hear a lot from teachers. And if you notice, what she told them to do was to have a voice level of a zero. The activity that the second graders were doing were to decide if the words sounded different. So to me, if I have to decide if the words sound different, I'm probably gonna be saying them out loud. So if you say zero, you have to hold them to that zero. If she would have said a level one where they could actually work out, she may not have had as many consequences because she's giving them that opportunity to talk. So this is something a lot of times we feel when we give directions, it's a voice level zero, voice level zero. What I say is, what voice level do you want in your room for that activity? Because if you're comfortable with a one or even a two, then that's fine as long as you give that to the students. But if you say a zero, you have the consequence. They're not zeros. If she gave them a one, she probably wouldn't have had the consequence as much because they were talking and trying to figure out those words. Does that make sense? All right, so what you're going to do is you're gonna be thinking about a lesson that you have upcoming and you're gonna use the planning guide to kind of plan your way through it, thinking about what directions might you have for them for the beginning of the activity, mm -hmm. what directions you'll have for if they finish early, and what directions will they have for if they have questions or if they need assistance. So if you do not have a lesson plan with you, you can think in a general term like a project-based learning, what, what might you give them for directions for that kind of activity. You don't have to say, in today's activity, you're going to do this. You can say, go back and work on your activity. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to go through this, and then we can kind of help each other out. You can work with a partner if you want to. This is up to you. And I'll stop talking and give you your five minutes. 